Yeah, I got uh, three weeks off. And went... Oh no! Lost the dog again. Hey, it's Lauren. Thanks for watching Dairy Farm Kind of Life. We have a pretty slow week this week. We have all of our seeds in the ground, and last week we took off first cut hay. So now we are just kind of doing regular chores. So I think I'll bring you along for that. I'm just about to feed calves, and Eddie wants to pressure wash the robots this week. So maybe he'll show you some of that and we're hoping to get a trip into the beach. We don't live close to a beach, but there's one about an hour and a half away, so we'll see if we can get that in later in the week. It's pretty cool here. It's like 16 degrees. I think a toque would have been a better option today. It's, it's quite chilly. Hey, Piper. You wanna come feed calves with me? You wanna feed calves, Pipe? So I just thought of something somewhat interesting I can share with you guys. Um, we're doing a little bit of a feed experiment for our calves. Not that we're unhappy with what we're doing, but we just want to try to get the best feed and there are so many different ideas of what's best. So we thought we would do our own little experiment. We did one last year in the summertime. Right now we're feeding a pellet and straw feed and we feel like they can maybe be getting more into them. So a friend of mine is a feed rep and she suggested a different kind of calf starter. So we are just going to trial that on um, some calves coming up here. We're going to go every other calf gets the other every other type of feed. So we have here a this is the the new one we're trying. It's just a pellet. If you're interested in more details on this let me know and I can go into it in further depth in another video. And this is the straw and pellets. This is mixed at a 15% straw rate which is high but we've tried lower rates and we find that they just don't eat it as much. So we went back to the 15 because we find that they eat it more and it's actually kind of easier because that's the rate we mix it up for our older heifers. So it's, they're all in the same feed, they don't have any transitions and we don't have to switch it, um, when, like switch any, make any different mixtures of feed. So we're trying that out and we'll track each scoop that we put into the calves' pails. So we'll obviously have to subtract the straw out of that, but that's math. So I'm gonna need Eddie's help with figuring out what a scoop is minus 15% straw. I mentioned before in another video that there are so many different ways to feed a calf or like any animal really. Like there's so many different types of food, types of methods and theories. So um, what we kind of found when we started off here, we kind of got bombarded with different free feed reps coming and we wanted to have an open mind. So we welcomed them in and everybody seemed to have a different theory. And Eddie and I came to the conclusion that like as long as you have good vaccination protocols and like cleanliness protocols that any of those theories can be good and any of the types of feed can probably be good obviously usually what you pay for what you get but we have found that you really just have to stick with something and if you do want to make a change to try to test it because you may not notice any differences and of course it's going to be hard to see differences over certain amounts of months so this is kind of mostly for fun and to see, like we just want to get the best quality heifers so that we can have the best quality milking animals in the future. And we just want to ramp up the herd here and just have success with uh, the robots and how much milk we can get per cow. I'm just keeping an eye on Piper over here so that she doesn't run away. Uh oh. Where did you go? What are you looking for? There are so many different ways to do it. There are so many different ways to feed a baby, to parent, to train a baby to sleep. It's just, it's the same for calves.
While the cats finish up drinking, I just wanted to show you that, um, well, I posted a short on this the other day about that we switched from straw bedding over to sand bedding for the summer. So if you're interested to know why, I've highlighted a few reasons in that short, but also, I also want to mention another reason we do it is to keep the flies down. The flies don't lay eggs in the sand because it's not organic matter like the straw is. So it keeps the flies way down and also we tend to just put one bucket of sand in the hutch like before the calf moves in and we don't have to bed up typically at all. So that's really beneficial to the sand and that's another reason why we love it. And I'm just going to show you here we have some hutch areas that we haven't cleaned up yet and I'm going to show you how much straw actually goes into a calf hutch by the end of the calf's time in the hutch and it's quite a bit. So this is the hutch area. So you can see how much straw actually builds up. You can see the wall of straw built up. I would say it's over a foot at the back. It does end up being quite a bit of straw, which of course is essential when they're when it's the winter and they're cold and they need to stay warm. It's great to have that much straw to keep them cozy and dry and warm. But in the summer, we just find it's not necessary. So I'm just gonna collect all the bottles now. They're all done. So at this point too, I'm just looking at the calves to make sure they've A, finished all their milk, B, that they're not scouring or having diarrhea or any visible breathing issues now that they've had their milk and they're going to now relax and I usually just do a walk through too before I go to the house when they're all laying down again because it's much easier to spot any respiratory issues when the calves are relaxing and laying down and settled in their hutch. My camera died and then my phone died and I was plugging it in and then I realized I forgot about the dog so I thought she ran off across the street. So I went looking for her. She was not there thankfully and judging by all the birds on her she took a trip down to the river on her own. So she's back and I'm just going to clean up the bottles now and uh, finish up. I also wanted to mention that we ended up selling one of our cows, the cow that we made a video on, Sick Milk Cow, and I'll try to put it up on the screen here. Um, she was having issues with being weak. She was falling and she was um, slipping on the scrape alley and falling down and there were a couple of times Eddie came in the barn and she was really dirty and um, had probably gotten bullied by a few of the other stronger cows. So we just thought it would be best before she had an, an, perhaps an incident in the robot and went down. And when a cow goes down in the robot, it's bad news. It's very hard to get them up and out. I hope you enjoyed my evening chores here. Thanks for watching. I'm in a position now where I have no field work to do for another all oh, three, four weeks till second cut comes off. That'll be maybe the beginning of July, a week into July. Um, so yeah, I got uh, three weeks off. And when a dairy farmer has three weeks off, Finally, you can tackle that list of things to do. So I got a list of things to do. I got a small list of things to do on the board here. And that is just a small list of things to do because if I actually wrote everything down on this board, it would fill the whole thing up and it would be kind of depressing. So I also have a mental list of things to do that I pick away at. Uh, but anyways, we're gonna start with the robots. We're gonna clean them down and make them look new again. Boo. Ah, you are alive. Ah. I'll show you the robots before we wash them. It's probably been four or five months since I cleaned them. So we'll clean uh, the outside here and this concrete wall and, the, and all this penning, all these posts, everything. This walkway, all of this. So I like to clean these robots every three or four months. So three or four times a year. These feed bowls, all this fencing here, down here, everything. We'll clean it all. So I just want you guys to see what it looks like before. And then I'll show you what it looks like when we're done.
So yesterday I finished washing the robots. It took about three hours and we washed this whole bridge, all the gating, all the fencing, the whatever you want to call it. And then the robots themselves on the outside, the concrete wall um, back there. So you can see they're all nicely shined up. Really happy with how it turned out. I even cleaned the flex augers a little bit up there. They're not perfect, but they're a lot better than what they were. I don't want to wash too much above the robots because there's electrical that goes down in them, but um, down here below the rooftop, like below this, everything down here is fine to get soaked. So if you compare that to the before video I did, it's a lot nicer. So three months, we'll do that again. If you're enjoying this video, I encourage you to please take a minute and hit the like button. That will help more people to find our channel and help our channel to grow, which we would love to happen. It's the next night now, and tonight I'm gonna get some of Eddie's chores on camera. So I'm out here feeding calves again, but I'm going to try to make sure I capture everything that he's up to. You don't have more fuel? there they're the super hutch and uh, it's getting pretty muddy from there well not muddy but gross from their manure and we had some rain so we're gonna clear it out so that it's uh, so that it's more comfortable be nicer for them in there. This is my favorite calf. This one here, number 25. She's my fave. 
I don't think we've ever had such big calves in a super hutch yet. Talking to the calf? What's his name? What did you just say his name was? Marty. No. What's his name? Is it Buddy? Yes. Oh, that's a good name for a calf. Because he's my buddy. Because he's your buddy. Eli always gets sad when we have to sell the bull calves, so he, I think he names them all Buddy. There was one that he named Dale. This naughty doggo snuck in here to drink milk. Eddie's gonna pick the pack now, which means in the pack pens where we have straw as the bedding, he's gonna pick out the manure that's on it and throw it into the scrape alley so that the scraper can pull it to the back and down into the pit. And he finds that doing that, I think he does it twice a day, morning and night, keeps the pens dry and clean and he has to bed them much less frequently. First I feed pellets to the dry cows so they all get up and eat, that way I can clean the pack pen nicely. a brand new feed tube today here um, it's kind of hard to explain but what was happening was so the, these pellets come from outside there's a grain bin out there there's a grain bin there what was happening was if too many cows were going into this robot without any cows going into this robot the, this feed tube would empty and then it wouldn't fill over to this robot so we needed a bigger one this one's much bigger so um, that should fix the problem and you notice this because we're not milking quite as many cows right now. We have a lot of calvings coming up, so we will have a lot of mil be milking more cows. But right now, we're at a low period, so cows um, prefer this robot where the tube was because that's the robot we train them on, and that's the robot where if we have any fetch cows, we lock them in the fetch area, then they go through this robot. So, and he was just noticing that a few times, cows would go into this robot and they weren't getting any pellet, which is not good because then that triggers a whole other problem that they're not gonna wanna go as often. So we needed to get that solved so that this, this second robot will always have feed coming to it even if the um, first robot has more traffic. crossovers down there but this cow is almost done so if I leave and don't get my fresh cow in and somebody else sneaks in and has to be milked then I gotta wait again so I'm waiting for this cow and then I'll chase the fresh cow This cow here has pneumonia. She is on antibiotics for it, so we have to dump her milk. Hey, hey, Eddie's spraying me. <laughs> the robot dumps the milk automatically, but Eddie wants to run her through the ro robot when he's there just to make sure everything's going well. We 
have this large drum of iodine based heat dip here. Um, you can see it. We go through about one every six months and it feeds automatically to the robot. We're just waiting for the other one over here to be empty and then this one will go in its place. I've lost the dog again. I'm clearly not so good at keeping an eye on her while I'm doing chores and especially doing some filming. So um, Eddie's looking for her now. See, what, We'll see if dad finds her. Okay. Did that calf finish drinking yet? No. I found the dog and finished cleaning up my calf bottles. And now I want to find Eddie and see what he's up to. He should be raking stalls, I think. It's way down there. What? One row left? The alley scraper is going back to rest until its next shift to pull manure to the end of the barn. Another job I do when I'm raking stalls is I fetch cows, but I didn't really have any tonight, so I just rake the stalls, and yeah, now I'm done. So I'll push feed in, uh, blow out the manure pipe at the back of the barn, and uh, call it a night. I got a meeting tonight with the Wellington County Dairy Committee, so that's at 8 o'clock, so we'll eat, get showered up, I'll go to that. Eddie has some pretty strict uh, cleanliness protocols, which he no doubt gets from his father. Um, so every time you're in with the cows and then come out into the feed alley, you have to make a stop at the robot room to wash off your boots so you don't get any manure in the feed alley. Eddie was explaining what he was doing, but it was too windy to understand, so we'll do another video explaining the full process. But what he was doing is blowing out the manure pump line so that sand from the bedding doesn't build up inside it and plug it. It'll blow air all the way through the pipes into the manure tank. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for sticking out till the end. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Thanks for supporting Dairy. Tune in next week on Friday and join us for a trip to the beach.